uh, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Bio Talk 252. Uh, I've just remembered I forgot to unzip a zip package <laughs> with a bunch of pictures, and I was like, damn it. And I haven't managed yet. So if we go wonky in a second, <laughs> you'll know why I'll be unzipping shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's get the, the, uh, the little uh, shenanigans out of the way. Go and buy something cool over at Skinny Play uh, and get a 10% discount if you use uh, the code uh, Mickey P4 in all caps. It's cap sensitive. Uh, and let me paste it over on the Twitch side. We're also on the Twitch side if you want to not support Google, etc. It's a, it's a thing. And uh, if you have Biolab 8000, you can now buy covers for that too. But uh, actually for that, I would say go to Prestige Creators. They also have a promo code running. And uh, you get 10% of all products until the end of the month. And uh, I'm actually thinking, will I make end of the month? No, I think I missed the last show at the end of this month <laughs> because I'll oh, be yeah. in a plane somewhere. <laughs> nice. So, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, get some uh, Oklamellas for your 18s or for your 8,000s uh, to make them look like 18s from Prestige. Uh, use the promo code uh, Wikipedia normally in small letters and get 10% off. And uh, or for your four thousands, or for your BLAB ones, or get a wall bracket. Uh, it it works on all the products, or pimp out your BLAB fives, and uh, make them look super cool. And uh, we're on Substack too. If you don't want to see our faces and uh, feel like uh, listening only, or if you listen to us on the go and you don't feel like uh, paying for YouTube Red, and uh, yeah, uh, so do that. Um, and what else? Oh, yeah, we're on Discord. So if you want to be the first to know uh, things, the Discord will work in perpetuity, uh, even when I'm not here. So that's cool. And uh, it's a, a handy board, and uh, you can uh, drool over others that just bought 90s. Indeed. And live vicariously. Uh, as as I have, and I'm going looking at these install uh, pictures by Killer Fly and going. I want a set of those. And just for public record, uh, in the pregame, <laughs> uh, Willie said, "If my fifties fall off the boat, he'll sell me his nineties finally." <laughs> Out of pity. <laughs> so now that's all set. Uh, yeah, the, the thank you. Let's, let's I'll, get I, I have a chat I with the boat people. Safe. I hope they are safe. Don't put them on a corner somewhere, you bastard. I know you're going to do that. <laughs> no, I'll just ask him to just leave him at the front of the container and just like, just slip that off. It goes off. <laughs> Let them slip off. Yeah, no. It's going to be legit, bro. Yeah. Also, if you have a, uh, want a guaranteed answer to your topic and their question, a super chat guarantees such a thing and it keeps the light on and it helps pay for bloody moving because it's annoying as shit and expensive. <laughs> Indeed. So, uh, yeah, uh, how was your week? Oh, it was interesting. I uh, finally figured out the rattle deal from the theater, at least in our shop one, and mine as well. Because the wings start to get loose, I guess, and they start to vibrate. But I think that most of that is more or less a production oversight than anything else. I did send some pictures to you. Uh, yeah. Essentially, the same pics that I had shown to be, you know, as what to pad. Uh, and I might go around and just pad all the other people's theaters, maybe. Have, has anybody said anything about it, or have they noticed? No, or... no but I'm just, Sorry. I don't know. My, my ears are too sensitive for it, I guess. But the next thing is that I'm going to take the G2 panel off, because that also rattles, too. Like, there is some, like, this thing just, it's got so much bass in itself that if it's coupled with a TV, it's just... Uh, it's it's not good, in my opinion. So, just more padding, more suspension. Because like compared to like the old school TVs, you know, like if you look at like Biovision Seven per se, like that had a huge metal basket that this whole thing was built under or off of. 
there was no way to rattle over it. They have no control over these panels now because they're made, you know, by LG. Yeah, third party peoples. Yeah, so that's that. But I also think that, you know, for the cost of these lamella grills, whatever, they should start gluing the bloody things all, all not just the first three, because they, they, it's not good. Wouldn't the, the, the glue wood dries? No, the wood dries. And uh, see, like in our scenario in the shop, that bloody thing comes off on on all the time or most like quite a bit, right? Because we change the speaker arrangements. So you have to run the, 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 the microphone tune, right? In order for mm -hmm. it to work. So every time you, we change speakers around, which is, you know, at least every three, four weeks, at least once a month, we rotate something. So <clears throat> just also like, you know, out of our personal curiosity to what it sounds like in different combinations, more or less. Right. And so you can have an idea, but, uh, yeah, also so the people can see different looks. And every time you do that, you have to take the grill right off it. And, you know, like, it's not that you're being rough about it or anything, because I'm trying to be as delicate as possible. But no matter what, there's still a play within the plastic and the wood when you're bending it out. And, like, it's always, you know, like, you can hear, you know, creaks and shit. And uh, and I think that that's the death penalty for uh, for the grill itself, because right in front of the woofers, that wood just sings with the, with the grills, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, mine doesn't. So it it's maybe when you use it on its own. Maybe it's when size I when I wrong. had it on my own. Yeah, when I had it on my own as a fifty five or on its own as a fifty five for the first few days. So obviously, it was brand new, so there was really nothing to rattle on it. But uh, I think that the wings just mechanically work themselves loose because uh, there are screws that retain them, and uh, and they. Uh, like every single one of my wings uh, here and in uh, in the shop were uh, shop was almost three quarter turn screw loose on hmm. each. So either do a Loctite or or some sort of something because if you use that you know if you listen to let's say jazz music or whatever and you just have a theater let's say in the Magic Triangle then 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 becomes a problem. So this is the bottom of the. The, the wing not the where the wing attaches and in factory you don't have those two silver uh pieces of aluminium covered in tessa tape yeah so i cut strips from tessa tape and put that there because you only have it on that half moon but not uh not on that bottom piece where you know the the the, the cup part meets the bottom uh uh i guess the, the keel or whatever you want to call it so I've padded that. <clears throat> if you go to the next photo, uh, I don't know what which one it is. The other it side, probably, I think. Yeah, it's the other side. I took a little bit, I guess, a better picture. So there's the original BNO factory padding that is on that half moon. Mm -hmm. But where it should be also is those two bottom pieces because that's where the wing actually touches the metal or touches the aluminum part. And... Uh, and that's what sings because it's just a micro vibration that, you know, like it, it's so powerful, bro. Like the, the, the bass drivers in this thing are they're just so overly powerful for what this thing can, how it's been well put together, but still it's just not enough versus how much, you know, uh, that, that, that entire sound bar, how much force that it, it needs to compete content with. So let's go next. Uh, yep. So you did the other side as well? I did both sides, of course. No, and but then, I mean uh, on, the, on the wings. Yeah. So on the wing, which was impossible to take a picture, but you see that uh, I cut like a freaking hair thin, like two millimeter strip of Tessa, and I put it on the bottom where the plastic is. You can see it there as well. Mm -hmm. So that's lined. And I did the same thing. I unscrewed those three screws uh, from the other side and stuck the Tessa tape underneath the, between the plastic and the aluminum because that, like when you tap on that, sometimes it rings. Hmm. So I've completely deleted the possibility of this thing ever singing again. Retightened the screws, and then uh, it went back on, uh, on the TV. Uh, I'm wondering if I'm going to take mine apart, if I'm going to have the same thing in the US or not, or... 
we'll see. If it's even noticeable when you have speakers on the side. Well, with 50s, it's really hard to hear anything because then it behaves completely different than even having it in standalone with 18s as rears or whatever, right? Yeah. When there is no front speakers, per se, in the group. So this is the... Uh, the, the the other cable cup or not cable cup but the wall bracket cover cup right that uh, goes on the wings so i tessa taped the entire bottom as you can see and all the way around with the two millimeter strip and then i put them uh, right where the screw points are for the screws i also lined that up as well with tessa tape so it there is no possibility to ring whatsoever because those little two foamy tapes are uh, more or less like a pity job. Uh, this is uh, the cab the back cable cover. So in this, I just put it's a basically a window seal tape. It's a it's just an open cell foam, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. ten by five millimeter uh, a tall uh, a strip. And I actually put there's a whole bunch more if you go to the next photo, which will show the best amount, I believe. No, we're on the slats. Uh, go to the Vesa Mountain. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so there is also see in the Vesa Mount all these little squares. That's the that's the little tape uh, uh, squares that I cut from that uh, that that foam tape to suspend it all and basically give it some resistance. I also put it in between those white cable management uh, clips. Mm -hmm. uh, that that crawl up the back neck of the vessel, uh, so that all has been uh, 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 what's it called? Yeah, I, I'm reading what Steve's saying, but yeah, I, I can I can totally see that. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, how how I've padded the crap out of it. So there's no possibility of any cable ringing, zinging. There's that helix box, which is basically the TV. Uh, like our, our uh, cable provider type of thing. So that's also, it has two large strips of, t of, of tape uh, of this, of that foam tape on the back of it. So if it's, if it's pushed against the TV or the vessel mount, it's not going to rattle. Like th th this is it, the only rattle there is right now inside of this is the panel itself, which I can't, well, I can't fix. I have to just take it off and unscrew it and, and then just put the, you know, basically make like foam blocks to suspend the, the back of it in the strategic place that you need to do that. Yeah. So this is the, this was the longest part of the project to do. <laughs> All these slats. It's like what? 70. There's, there's 74 of these fucking things in there. And I have done all 68 because the last three on each side are glued. So, uh, yeah, it was a tedious process, but like I said, you know, it, it was well worth the time because they now they fit like there is nobody's business inside the grill. And, you know, even if you turn it or, or like, you know, when you bang on the grill, you can't hear anything zinging and vibrating. So they're they're on there properly. Like, obviously, this is even what I've because <clears throat> I've, I've sent this as a report to, to B&O. And, uh, and uh, what I wrote in the conclusion is essentially – uh, the slats for the price that these are priced as far as the wood covers are concerned, the slats should be uh, micro screwed in just like they are on the Violab 18s if you want to justify the cost of it mm -hmm. uh, or even cheaper and much more reliable solution in my opinion would be just to start gluing these bloody things in production line, all of them. You're already putting them all on that grill regardless by hand. You might as well just run them through, have a jig that you just tap and it's it's covered in enough glue that it's not gonna ooze out and it's not gonna be you know shit show, but something that that definitely uh, needs to address that problem because these these slats are in a, in a in a dry climate. It's like I I couldn't even imagine what these grills would behave like in Calgary with such yeah. a dry air. Because you know it's what so I mean? dry, like they would just, they would just the fall and, out. Yeah, they would just fall out. Because the, they just don't fit the dimension anymore, man. I mean, it must so, have been a pain in the ass to actually get them all out without, like, cracking any plastic or wood. It was unbelievably easy. But I have a special pila, as uh, the Danes call it. <laughs> so 
it's a specific one. It's actually the one that if uh, people are have been around uh, not just the channel, I guess, but around BNO for a while and seen how the covers on the BOLAB 9s get changed or BOLAB 20s per se as well. It's that peeler that fits in between the back grill uh, slats so you can lift up that little uh, uh, plastic cover that's held by those three retainers. Hmm. So, yeah, so this was the, the whole venture. This was the more or less a uh, bit of a Friday afternoon. Like all of this took me about two hours to do. Wait, so is the idea now that you're going to do this for every customer from here on in? Because that's a heck of a lot of install work all of a sudden. No, not that, but it's just something that I think BNO should do consider in uh, how they're going to approach this because this is still going to start coming back. They're going to start having RA grills and whatever because if it's going to start coming off, people are not going to tolerate that. Not for $1,700 Canadian dollars. I'm not going to deal with shit, you know, toothpicks falling off my TV. You know, <laughs> not happening. You need to grow larger than you can actually use. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, these are these are toothpicks for like Gary Busey, I guess. I forgot. <laughs> or Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was uh, pretty tedious, but um, I think the the only thing that I found the most pain in the butt was to cut the goddamn tape size. Yeah. The rest was uh, the rest was easy. Taking them out was easy. Clicking them back was easy. It was actually quite satisfactory process. And. Uh, yeah, once you put it back all on and, and you listen to the theater, like more or less full volume and nothing's rattling other than the screen a little bit that ran away, runs away. Or I don't care for the fixtures because those also zing a little. But if there's nothing sonically coming out of the, you know, in front of the woofers or from the wings, that's that's a win. That's a win for me. So, yeah, that was my uh, that was the I guess the pinnacle of my week to to finish to fix this and finish this up. I, I guess the only good thing or weird thing, or I'm not sure how to uh, how to frame this, but I I I have none of these issues, and uh, I mean I I was one of the the first with the wall bracket issue where that would sing. Uh, on, but that's a, a tolerance of the wall bracket itself, uh, but mm -hmm. with some tape over the the sort of semicircles where it hangs in. Other than that, it's been fine, and I, I use the theater by itself uh, occasionally, so not all the time. But mm -hmm. I, I really I mean maybe it's the tolerances that are off here and there by like half a mil or something. But, but on mine, nothing rattles. But TBD, sort of, because I also haven't taken it apart uh, uh, since the first time. There's yeah, how no many times to... have you retuned it? Yeah, like you haven't had need to retune any of this stuff. I've retuned it a fair bit because uh... <laughs> amongst oh, which coming out of beta and losing everything. Fair enough. Uh, uh, do you have a link for the tape, Willie? I am actually looking for it right now. But, I mean, so it, it, you may be affected, you may not be, which is not any better, but I guess I'm not. I mean, my. I think it's an issue for everybody. Like, it's, it's that's just what it is. Here you go, bud. This is in a Canadian Amazon, but it's just a test of tape because you can everywhere. buy it anywhere. They're everywhere, man. But this is. That's the exact same spec one that BNO has, uh, but they want eighteen bucks for one roll, and you can buy five for twenty six on Amazon. <laughs> if it said BNO on the inside of the spool, I would buy it. Uh, Craig asks, "Is this a problem on any of the other products?" Twenty eight. No, they're screwed in. Those this are is... screwed in, bro. This is the only one that that is. Uh, they basically friction fit it and relied on the fact that the wood's not going to explain. Or expand. I mean, on the 18s, only the side slats are magnetically held into place, but the magnets are so bloody strong that you can barely peel them off. I'm always scared mm. of breaking the two side slats. Stefan does have a point. It's just me because I play it really, really loud for normal people. We're just fine. So, yeah. Yeah, that's also true. But then again, uh, you know what? Like, if but I it were... shouldn't happen. You should be able to speak... 
play your speakers at the within the spec of volume they let you they do. say and and quite honestly like, yeah that's like the same thing like if you have a sports car well why would you not be able to drive it over 120 kilometers an hour right well my ferrari is shaking and <laughs> <laughs> wheels all fucked <laughs> so <clears throat> so yeah that's uh that's something that it's of a feels bad but yesterday i watched a, a few movies movies i started watching jack reacher i don't know if you've seen that yeah show. yeah yeah. great show it's pretty cool it's actually pretty cool yeah and uh yeah like even with the intro you know like all these stupid stars and shit like when it starts in the beginning of the you know the all the shows and the movies this is where like the the, the wings would just run away from me but now everything is just rock solid but i do need to take the panel off uh probably next saturday i'll do that because i want to get uh, i need to get the wrap to wrap the screen because i don't want to get all fingerprinted and shit yeah and then again i'd have to tell uh, i'm going to have to take the wings off because i don't want to piss about with uh jamming my fingers between the aluminium to pick them up and whatnot <laughs> Stefan says when he, you were testing his system, you had to go next door for a normal listening experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know what I mean? Like, you want to have it uh, done right, and to do it right, you got to also crank it up because that's when you start listening for where, the, where it starts to run away. So, uh, that's uh, that's what I think. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it. Does your theater have uh, rattle issues? Uh, let's see how we are. See, like like Captain Gerard, he wouldn't have a problem. Did you notice any is... at Stefan? No, no, because they're standalone. But as soon as surely the slats them, still move, right? Or the wings? Well, that's, or... For, that's, that's TBD, but also, like, you know, per se, Stefan's, those girls were taken off once, maybe twice, uh, yeah, second time when I came over to finish the tuning. That's about it. Like, it's not like, it's not something that just fucking periodically happens like it does in a store, right? Where, you know, if a client comes in and you also, they want to see the driver sometimes, you got to take off the whole thing, right? It's just what it is because you can't just like bend the half of it off. Yeah, th th that is a thing with X demo. I mean, I remember that from fifties in certain shops where people wanted to see drivers and things. And <clears throat> I once took a cover off a of fifty in a shop, and it was like, "This is really loose." It's like that's when, like you know, that's a sacrificial pair, right? Like you just have uh, at that point, in my opinion, what should be done is uh, re place not just the grill but all those rubber grommets that are pushed in as the retainers for the grill because those are also you know like yeah they wear they they get they get worn out by the ball in and out all the time or it's not pushed in properly all the way so it makes a new divot to the to the rubber and they also dry up and you know like if they dry up but the grill never moved then they are fastened properly but if you always keep messing with it then uh then uh yeah it, yeah it just works as in literally works <laughs> itself loose that's mm. another thing that in my opinion is a little bit dangerous territory like to, to venture into the 77 inch wings wouldn't i want to hear what henrik has to say because henrik has a 77 inch right yeah wouldn't they make a different rattle if one at all Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> Here you go. Now your move to Florida will be easy. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they'll accept Canadian money over there. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, anyways, what are you saying? But uh, if they're a longer uh, length, they make a different micro vibrations. It, it makes a different sine wave, obviously. So maybe it it. it it's not an issue or if it is it does it doesn't become audible there's also more mass well there is more mass on them yes that's what i'm saying like uh did i do i did a 77 inch wings 
But that I cannot comment on that fucking thing because that was installed over top of the fireplace, of course. And when you fired up the theater, like I thought that the box that the fireplace was built in is just going to fall apart. Because it was all ringing and zinging. Like there was no way, like you couldn't pad that for the life of you because it's going to melt the next time you use the fireplace. But it's not, you know, I don't understand why people do that, but they do still do that. They put the shit over top of the fireplaces and, you know. Yeah, I, I know this is one of my most common critiques of TVs in the US and whatnot. But uh, uh, as it turns out, there's actually a subreddit for this called r slash TV too high. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? That's funny. It's a, it, it, it's uh, it's all people with their TVs way too high. Mm. I guess, uh, yeah, we should address the elephant in the room as far as the March uh, pricing increase goes. Uh, things got up quite a bit in uh, in prices, especially the A9. Oh, is that the subreddit you're talking about? Yeah. TV too high? Oh, Jesus Christ. That's right at the ceiling, bro. <laughs> Spectacular you, you know the subreddit only works in North America <laughs> Jesus lord I mean, my brother-in-law it's has a TV so that's like awful. six inches lower than this it's so awful I mean he, he has like I don't know 10 foot ceilings or something which is normal right but the top of the TV is like a foot from the ceiling <laughs> But I do agree with, I think Megan said that, that uh, in America they do that because of the fucking lazy boy uh, uh, chairs, right? So when you recline, you're basically, your field of view is up into the ceiling more or less, right? Yeah, even, even so, I mean. I think on. it's absolutely ridiculous, bro. And that's one of the things that when people come in and see B&O TVs on the floor stands, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so low. Yeah, like, yeah because so you sit, you don't lay. Be... You sit yeah. on a couch, you don't lay on a couch. Yeah, it's still European for here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, with uh, uh, some drum or very little drum roll, really, because I don't think that much has actually changed. I think now, it was like a... that's, yeah. that's all they had. <laughs> well, I mean, how long have I known about this? A while. I think I w was. I told you before you knew. <laughs> Oh yeah, this was coming. Uh, so uh, if you're listening, B and O, I don't fucking leak, but you do have leaks. <laughs> and also, uh, yeah, uh, people that you send your stuff to uh, publish articles the day before launch and stuff like that. So uh, we have an, a, a Mark Five A Nine and a Mark Three B S M Two, and uh, that's on the verge of Mozarting everything. We opened up the A9 in the shop, and I don't know. I'd say it sounds better than the 28. Like, overall rounded, it sounds better than 28, where we have it in the shop. The Mark IV or the new Mark V? Mark V. I think it's, it actually sounds, in my ears, it sounds a little bit, I don't know if it's fucking placebo or I'm crazy, but it sounds better than the Mark IV by a little bit. Well, they did some DSP work as per usual. and It uh, definitely like, has a little bit more. I appreciate the fact that there is no goddamn Google-possessed nonsense in it anymore. I'm so uh, happy that not everything is Google Voice. Uh... It shouldn't be. I, I think that was a... a I don't. I'm not gonna say it was a mistake, but I think it was a necessary process to for them realize the fact that not everything voice is always cool. No, and, absolutely and, not. And uh, and I'm glad that they had sobered up from that and moved away, and and we're going into something that you know, yes, Mozart platforms awesome, but uh, you know, actually, now that I think of it, this to, to digress a little bit. Uh, I do like the Mozart. Uh, I don't like the three second joint. It's too long to push a button for me and hold it. Like, you know, it's like, you know, you're waiting for the pulse. Yeah, but I think in the app you can invert it, can't you? No, no, not that I've seen. So 
But is it on the AC platforms then? Because they, it, yeah. on one of them, there is a, a setting where you can, it's literally a toggle old tap to join or new tap to join. I think it's on the old uh, stuff. I mean, your old level no longer answers to OK Google. That's insane. Oh, shit, I just fucked up all that already. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's on the ASC. Yeah, it's on the ASC. I don't have anything ASC anymore because I, I had an M3 here to play with. I gave it to my girlfriend. Uh, so. Christian, please implement that also on the on the motor platform as a toggle. It's it's annoying to to hold stuff. I know it's isn't that like such a stupid first world problem though. I mean, surely if it's a, just a toggle, it, it it doesn't really matter. To me, it just goes against the logic of what I had grown up around in BNO, where a long press on anything shuts the whole system off. Yeah. That's, you know, like, the, to me, that's when I go, it's like, okay, and I'm just expecting everything to just power off, but it don't, and all of a sudden it just goes tick, tick, like it double, double clicks, and uh, on the emerge, per se, in my house, in my apartment here, and, and, it, and it starts playing. So. <laughs> you bastard. I wish you luck with your requests. <laughs> I'm gonna put as a request for change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh other than that I have no issue with it. I actually kinda like the fact that I can just shut off the theater and then it automatically powers off the level. I mean the emerge if it's playing from the theater. But uh the thing that scares me, though, is the implicit price increase in these products. Because the Biosound 2 is now three grand mm -hmm. here, euro, and an A9 uh, will go to 3,300. So yeah, now we're uh... at the point where a balance is cheaper than a Biosound 2. <laughs> Unless you go with the marble balance. Then you're playing with some real money there. Then I think that that it's on a it's on a teetering. I think the price of the A9. But yeah, a balance is like three hundred euro less, so ten percent less for a balance versus a Beer Sound Two, mm -hmm. which is like however much you like. And I have a Beer Sound Two sitting right here still. Like, uh, like my hands are like, I have the box ready to pack it, but I, I kind of want to use it and it's annoying and I don't know what to do because I have to move. And I think that's the last one you should pack because all the rest of it, it'll go before that. So at least you'll have some sort of BNO sound in the house. Or I guess the, the last one that should be going is the M3 because yeah. it's plastic and who gives a fuck. But uh, yeah, don't, don't pack all your music up and then you're going to sit here like a dweeb, like shit, I have nothing to listen to. <laughs> but, because you uh, will regret it. A beer sound two for three grand, which is it's starting to get steep. So like a balance I... is ten percent less than a beer sound two, and an A nine is ten percent more than a beer sound two. Why would you not buy a A nine or a balance at that point? I guess you're going for the beer sound two for the pure sake of its elegance. That's that's the only thing because the sound of it is. You know, it's impressive, but to me, it's not as impressive. And for the money that you spend on it, I would rather lean towards the A9 at this point of time. Yeah, but especially Mozart, I mean, if Mozart still allows you to stereo pair an A9. Like, God, that's a good system. But the A9 is crazy. I don't really uh, see a benefit in having the stereo pairing feature in it because I don't know how many people will go uh, and, and buy two A9s. Which is at that point ten thousand uh, dollars, and 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 put them together as a pair of speakers. That's a little bit awkward for me. Uh, two A nines would be half the price here of uh, twenty eight. Mm -hmm. And if you're already saying like you like an A nine more than twenty eight, then On the maybe you side. have two kids, and you need uh, custom uh, skinny play covers. Uh, promo code Wikipedia for it. <laughs> like one kid <laughs> left, one kid right. <laughs> His and hers, <laughs> yes, in the closet. But yeah, it's uh, it sounds really good. It sounds really good, I must say. So, oh, I I absolutely believe it. Uh, but it's like the, I mean, uh, so the Beer Sound Two has gone up a hundred percent in six years. 
BNO is the only brand that appreciates over the years, bro. Yeah. Buy it but, early. I mean, Buy this is where, where sell late. This is where you <laughs> you get people like me when they say, "Oh, we have it's because of inflation." Like there hasn't been a hundred percent inflation in six years. Also, it hasn't been a steady sixteen and a half percent every year. Yeah, but I think if you consider the cost of energy now, because I'm, I'm sure that they're, you know, like they're not running this shit off a Tesla battery and a couple of fucking solar panels as far as the factory five is concerned. Like there's a lot of power that they can, like the bills, right? The bills gone to shit in Europe everywhere. You've seen it on your own. Like, you know what I mean? Sitting there in the fucking night vision with the red light and whatnot for the last two years since COVID hit, fucking <laughs> power, like you know, I can it's make like you a different color if you want. <laughs> you hide in there like it's you know like it's like it's during the bombing runs for God's sakes, you know. <laughs> but uh, it it yeah, it's it's gotten expensive, and also shipping got expensive to shit. Yeah, because but it's no longer now. To move. But well, yeah, but it's still. There's still people that retain the bullshit narrative of, oh, yeah, because of COVID, we have a you know shortage of this and that. And then, no, because motherfuckers that you had contract with are lazy now and they don't want to do nothing. I mean, shipping That's has why. quite literally gone down 10x. It used to be mm -hmm. $1,500 a container, roughly from here to the US. Mm -hmm. Then it went to like 15 ish grand plus, And now it's back mm -hmm. to like 1200 bucks or something like that. That's not bad. Uh, yeah, that's not bad at all. So, uh, the the shipping is no longer the issue. I mean, I, I can get it uh, as at a temporary surcharge or something, but I mean, it it doesn't seem any other manufacturer if they make something more, the price goes down over time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean take any of the high-tech uh, intel like the, imagine if if your iphone 6 now was more expensive than when it's launched yeah but that's not a that's not a like realistic comparison to begin with right if you think about it like this this is a piece of electronics that no matter what i i don't think that it's impervious to time but it still outlives and outperforms something that is conventionally developed to be just disposable piece of gear you know what i mean so it's uh you know before that you know uh cradle to cradle nonsense that they came out with which i support that time will only tell how accurate that 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 thing would work out like but for me it's the fact that you know i have i have gear in my collection from the you know, that predates any electronic that I currently own right now outside of the BNO brand. Same. Period. Period. Same. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it fucking works together with the current stuff also, which is insane. So to me, yes, that's a it's a it's a different comparison, you know what I mean? How many cell phones have I gone through since I bought the Biovision 9? And my Biovision 9 is still at my mom's house right now, heating up the house. Because the panel's fucking crazy, bro. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's good <laughs> well, for least, winter. At least she's, uh, how would you say, eco-friendly because she has electric heating now. Exactly. Like, yeah, that <laughs> no longer does. needs gas to heat. <laughs> I remember even in the shop when we had the BB12 and Biovision 450 before the 12 came out. We had it in the theater. And during Christmas, we would put the fireplace channel on and the TV would be on the whole day. So it's just like the door was closed. You walk in there, it's like 37 degrees inside. Everybody's like, oh, my God. Well, yeah. This TV puts out also heat. A lot of it, too. Yeah. I mean, they do come out with uh, the, the two new standard colors with the anthracite, which looks... That looks good. Yeah. That looks real good. I haven't seen it in real life yet, but uh, if, if it's this sort of lighter version than the sort of semi-black, then I'm really excited for that. Makes me want to pull out my Biosound 2 or Biosound 1 from the storage locker. Your Darth Vader one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, and obviously they do gold now. 
Uh, just some more sort of whatever. Uh, yeah, it well, looks good with uh, like there's a couple pieces uh, that would look good with the furniture, like that house that I did uh, the theater on that little light oak uh, cabinet with the 18s, or everything was light oak. Yeah. Like yeah, you can get away with that somewhere in the corner being in gold because it kind of blends into the colors of the wood. But uh, the antler side is very nice, actually. I mean, if did you know that when you close uh, when you when you plug those little two slats on the side. Basically, like cup its ears, it'll it, it, it's very likely to drop the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a Faraday cage in there. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly where the antennas are. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a clever design, though. I have to say, I had to like I, I didn't have the Biosun two apart, but I had the Biosun one apart when I swapped the chassis on them. Well, not chassis, but the the look, I guess. When I redressed them. But uh, so. I mean, the BSN two still looks amazing. I I guess on the other hand, the price increase sort of. If if we're going after the very high net worth individuals, it makes sense because a lot of those people probably don't care that much. Mm-hmm. I mean, but to you and I, an extra three hundred is a lot. But if I don't know, you, you make over five hundred grand a year, it's probably not that much. Yeah. Like, how much do you care for an extra three hundred? Because you still have something that looks cool. It's you know what? It's the same as buying expensive furniture. What's another few five hundred, six hundred dollars on it if it goes up and you want it? At the end of the day, you're not buying it for a month or two. You're buying it for a long, like well, furniture like that you probably buy for the rest of your life if you if you collect it type of thing, you know. But uh, with this, like you buying that for. As long as the electronics in it live, because the aluminium shell will outlive you altogether, anyways. So, yeah. Uh, other Christian says top UI is now improved, more clear and sharp. Yeah, the, the, That's I like cool. the Mozart UI. I do too. I mean, it, I and it, it re- just really works uh, on the BSN two and a balance and twenty eight even. I, I I hear people say, uh, "Oh, when do we Mozart 18s? And I'm like, "Please don't." Because where the heck would you put a touch you on in 18s without ruining the look of it? Mm-hmm. The one thing that I would comment on when it comes to the Mozart UI or the interface altogether, I really like it. The only thing that I do not appreciate is there is no way to turn off the Bluetooth uh, visibility on uh, my theater. So I can essentially have uh, my neighbors pair into it. They can't really play because I haven't authorized it as a device. But you can see that, you know, there is, it, it bing bings that it, somebody is trying to fucking get in. Because on the ASC platform, you could actually disable the Bluetooth completely, and it's just not, it's it's not applicable. Wait, I Where, have to look. Is there not a button, a Bluetooth button on the top of the theater? Yeah, but that's just like, then it's, you know, with my OCD, it's the same thing. Like, I even then I have to turn off the microphone as well, so then both of them are fucking off, right? Like Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but they, I don't think the Bluetooth ever turns off. It just uh, goes to pair mode. I think if you was it if you hold, touch it short or something, you turn it off, and if you hold it for long, it goes to pairing. But I don't remember. No, it's just post. Now it's uh, in a pairing mode, I guess. I mean, maybe. Thinking about it, could the Bluetooth actually be turned off when you have a Bluetooth remote? Probably not. No, but the visibility could be turned off, so you don't see the other devices don't yeah. broad- see it as broadcasting. But you know, whatever's paired is paired. <clears throat> yeah, I know, Steve. They're not always open for pairing, but they're visible on the net. Like I just, I want to have it turned off. Like I don't want somebody to see my theater. You know what I mean? It's just. <laughs> No, my neighbor's fine. She's cool now because I gave her a level for a while. So here you go. You know, you can listen. I can listen. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta fight fire with fire sometimes, bro. And it works as long as nobody's getting burned. This sort of new retro look for an apartment makes me want to live there. By the way, this. Yeah, I don't know if I like that little Chinese theme lamp there. It looks I very. I kind of do. 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, thing. I'm not a big fan of having an A9 in the corner and a B assigned 2 right up on the table. It, that makes very little sense, but I get it for a product picture. <laughs> what? The, the B assigned 2? Yeah, like, why do you have, have a speaker right there and then, like, two meters away, another one, which is not the same one? Product placement. Yeah, that, that, for that reason, I understand it. But in terms of like, oh, this is an actual living room. It was like, hmm. By the way, yeah, did you see opinion, they, have an actual, been... they have an actual wire for once. They have a power cord. Oh, it's like actually powered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. They don't show where it's going, but it's going somewhere. Uh, yeah, at least well, it exists. It's a nice, sexy braided uh, cable like I got for the 18s. It's It's very nice. Oh, I like, like a good braid. That's something, table. yeah. That's something that you can actually show off instead of the boring as black uh, plastic nonsense that that always comes with everything. Yeah. I mean, and uh, there's a is, it, uh, is this dark oak or smoked oak and anthracite? Anthracite and walnut, I believe. I mean, it looks good. I. I've been saying for years now. I'm, I, I'm sort of in the market for an A9, but I don't have any room. <laughs> They changed it on the well. The gold tone has a, it's called sand color back, which is almost uh, yeah, like on the nineties. It's golden, sort of sand white or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's like I guess coyote brown would be or some close to that. It's very different. I mean, I must say though, I really, really appreciate that uh, BNO kept the A nine. Because in terms I think of that would design, be a big error. It's it's fantastic. It's very timeless. I'm glad that they pulled it back into their main product line and call it BioSound A9 instead of just Bio Play. Yeah. That it now has the Bang and Olufsen logo on the top. Because that was the one thing that to me it kind of was missing that, right? You know. Yeah, it was too good to be Bio Play. <laughs> yes, yes. They definitely uh did I buy the braided cables? No, no, no. The BNO has the, the braided cables that come with the A9. And I had my braided cables for a while, and I just, had, just hadn't had a chance to dig them up from the storage till I got the 18s over here. So, but yeah, they are. If you want to see them, Stefan, they're in the shop. Uh, we have a balance plugged into one of them in black, and, uh, and I think, uh, yeah, we have an A9 that you can see the cable on. They're actually quite nice, to be honest. I would advise tracking down an Essence remote or be a remote one for controlling an A9. Because I'm yes. not the biggest fan of the touch controls in the back. No. And it, also, it, just let's not forget, which was a tip that we gotten after, or you gave me after we went off offline or off air, mm -hmm. that if you do an Essence remote, if you use an Essence remote with a Mozart platform, uh, the first top button press is my button one so whatever you want to uh if you want to have a theater turn on the radio then you have to change your my button to turn on the radio yeah it's from uh other christian, Hi, yeah, other so christian. Thank, thank you christian i really appreciate that because yeah like I, I i i couldn't i wasn't understanding this properly till you said that and i'm like fuck like why does it I, I, it should be a radio command, but it turns on freaking YouTube and it turns it on to like the kitchen preset, right? Yeah. Which I'm like, oh shit, it's actually my button one. So. So thank you, Christian. <laughs> yeah, thanks, bud. So technically, if you send, uh, if you set your my button one to a standby button, then you can turn it off with the with the essence yeah. remote as well. But you can also turn it off by holding the the button button for two seconds and shut it down. But yeah, essence yeah, remotes are cool. Double turning it off. <laughs> essence remotes are cool. Yeah, they're they're pretty hard to get. Apparently, nobody has them anymore. Oh really? Yeah. I got two in my apartment. I put one on the on the side of the bed and and one in the bathroom. I I have it one too. Sense. It's it's already in a box now. Uh, but apparently, Just take the batteries out. Uh, no. You should. Well, they're brand new. Yeah. I, I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, th this white on the back of the A9 is more or less the same color scheme as the 90s are. Again, on the A9, this color scheme is nowhere near as offensive to me as it is on 50s and 28s. What do you mean? The white, gold, and, uh, and oak? Yeah. I mean, gold is still not my favorite, but on 50s... Yeah, but there's so little of it on the... Exactly. On, like, 50s are pronounced as hell with the gold. They, they, they look too gaudy to me as well. Even but 20, 28s so are minimal. horrible to me. The gold is so minimal on there. <laughs> <laughs> we won't forget who's the real OG, Christian. Don't worry. <laughs> Wait, does that mean that that Christian is the Christian Mark One and the other one is the Christian NG? <laughs> <laughs> Are you the Android version, other Christian? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that. I hope he's Mozart by now. Oh, God. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> yeah, also I invite the skinny play for a challenge to put the quadrat cover in under, like, whatever fucking eight seconds that they did, that nonsense. There's no way. There's no way, y'all. The quadrat, I had the, the, the contrast edition here with the <coughs> dark gray, gray quadrat. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty manageable because the fabric is kind of stretchy and thick right it's not as springy as the normal material is but the thing that was the biggest pain in the ass was to get it wrinkle free because mm -hmm. it's so thick as soon as you do that to a wrinkle you just put one in down below and it's like oh but i do appreciate whoever was in the production uh development of the a9 over the i know it it took a long time more or less but those little tabs that are now in the grills, the, the, the retainer tabs, absolutely best idea ever. <laughs> best idea ever. Yeah, I, I think that was, uh, that was great. Great thought. I mean, I, I do like it. it if, I if... always have. I just don't have a purpose for it in my apartment or anywhere. Like, really, like, you know what I mean? I really wonder how this sounds uh, stereo paired. Oh, dude, it's got to, uh, it'll wipe the floor from the 20s or with the 28s, sorry. Yeah, but at that point, in terms of uh, the sort of uh, the, the, the direction they've gone with, everything must be multi purpose. Yes, it's not a bio lab, but if you're looking for speakers connected to a source potentially or with built in sources, but you don't care for TV use, like why would you still buy 28s? Nothing because else this, but the look. Yeah, I mean, this is half the price if you buy two. And the Mark IV, I mean, it's the same speaker setup as the Mark IV. So it's basically 1,500 watts. Now, you won't use everything because part of it goes to uh, uh, room compensation and for the... 360 sound so if you have it up on a wall or something it, it, you're not just reflecting silly amounts mm -hmm. but i love the sound of the a9 it was very sweet it was very mellow it 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 for sure didn't have it was rich hum, man uh, no i found sound. it it was rich it definitely was rich on the bass it was it it had a warm sound it still does have a warm sound to it, in my opinion it sounds very good for what it is very very good for what it is it stood the test of time. It, it buried the freaking, uh, what's that coin? Uh, edge. Yeah. The edge was, I think edge was a complete flop comparatively to, uh, to an A9 because the edge lasted what? Two years in the portfolio at the most. It's, it's still there. I think they're just waiting for it to sell out. <laughs> so honestly, like I, it's a, I, the, the, it's a the, great product for a commercial space, but not a product for an in-home application because of the placement limitations and how it actually behaves sonically. Super cool tech with the active baseboard and the rolling for volume and that sort of thing. But uh, in terms of usability, yeah. Hmm. The A9 is is such an icon, and it... You can you can pretty much tell that B and O knows this as well because it's been a solid uh, contender for over I mean, a decade sales now. king for like the over a decade now. 
I mean, it's also one of the few B&O speakers that doesn't necessarily look B&O, but is B&O. It fits with B&O, but it also fits with everything else that you can throw at it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the cover is just skinny play and cu customized to your heart's desire. Yeah. No, I. It's a, it's a great product, and like you said, it's just stood the test of time, it, it, and it probably will for another five to ten years, in my opinion. When, uh, if it's gonna be on the Mozart platform, then then we're talking about the Cradle to Cradle uh, module that you can just replace that internally and and upgrade it to something different. Because at the end of the day, yes, the picture changes, the quality of the picture changes, uh, TVs, HDMI cables, this and that changes. But at the end of the day, the way the sound is made is always going to be from a speaker driver. Yeah. And that's just the physics, and that's all there is to it. So, yeah, speakers will always be here for much longer than anything else has ever been around. Plus, I mean, if if, so, if, if it is actually 100% true that uh, all the Mozart devices are using 20 30% of their chip capability... Like, do we expect to have to replace it for anything in any time soon? Probably not. I don't think so. I, I don't know what, like, what can you put all uh, else on it? You know, like, I guess they now put in a title support, so that might actually chew up a little more because you're, you're now uh, able to stream master quality music. Yeah, but not MQA. Mm. So I guess we can do Codex uh, B and O. Maybe think if you're offering title, maybe. MQA availability. I don't know. I don't use it, but uh, other people have asked for a uh, Rune endpoint. Hmm. So uh, I don't know. This the whole MQA thing. It seems like it's a big marketing ploy by a company that wants to sell you something, uh, which it probably yeah, is, but. but well, we've been asking for a title for a while, you know, for the yeah. pro for the on the product. So I'm I'm glad that they finally listened, and you know, maybe once I do get to Florida and 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 maybe I'll keep the theater, maybe I'll sell it here and I'll buy another one there. I don't know. Uh, you can do all the the cutting of strips again. <laughs> fuck, it's not a big deal. I, I, you know what? I enjoy doing that kind of stuff. Like I, I think honestly that I should be working for BNO in the R and D department when it comes to the quality control and like day to day usage of, of products. Yeah, because uh, I have a, I guess, a unique talent in figuring things out that normally you wouldn't come across as a use case, but you kind of do. You know. Yeah, I'm with Guy personally on this. Uh, let MQA uh, go away. What's an MQA? Is it a format of some sorts for music? It's like MKV? Yeah, but it's MQA? a codec. Mm. It's a, a master quality audio or something is what it stands for, but it's still compressed as far as I'm aware. Mm. Maybe I'm wrong. But Tidal is the only one that uses it, and it doesn't really tell you when or how or what, and it's their proprietary product. Mm. And I have a feeling that if the big uh, players sort of start dropping it, as in your Google, your Spotify's, etc., and they all go in on Dolby Atmos music, that this will be uh, EOL soon enough. Because a lot more people seem to enjoy Dolby Atmos music. Mm -hmm. Because Atmos goes everywhere now. Yeah. Interesting observation when it's speaking of uh, streaming services. Uh, my girlfriend maybe, was here. By the so way, maybe she'll... Apple should be built in. Apple Music. Apple Music, yeah. My girlfriend was here the other day and she connected Spotify to the theater. So I listened to a few songs and I'm like, yeah, let's listen to this. It's like, you know, A to B, like, you know, same song on Deezer versus what uh, Spotify. Spotify sounds like shit. It's Spotify. honestly it's, uh, three compared to Deezer. Compared to Deezer, I was actually surprised how much. Like, obviously, I have Deezer Hi-Fi, so yes, it's twelve bucks a month instead of or fourteen bucks a month instead of ten or whatever it is. Well worth the money. 
But the cool thing is that now I have Spotify connect on my music source. And every time I connect to it, it just kicks her the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and I can listen to her stuff. Oh, there we go. It turned on. Yeah, uh, you oh, know, so maybe start looking at Apple Music or uh, Atmos Music. I mean, so many people have started using Apple, and uh, also Apple is one of the cheapest ones for the highest quality audio. Mm. So, uh, I mean, yes, it's a walled garden, etc., but they also own so many bloody songs and records and things. And, and rights. Yeah, but it's, I think, for their full hi fi suite, which includes 24 bit stuff, is like seven bucks a month. That's not bad. No. And uh, also, yeah, well. Apple announced a new classical music app as well. So if you're into classical music, uh, you're taken care of. I'm going to turn on my compressor here. Really. I mean, I'll mute it, myself. <laughs> It would be good, probably, if you can, uh, if they can either make it an Apple Music endpoint, uh, like they did for Tidal and Spotify, or I'm not sure how much uh, API access Apple is willing to give a company like B and O without massive fees and stuff. So I'm not sure if that will be a limiting factor in all of it. Yeah, well, it's, you know, the, the streaming service is like a death by thousand cuts. Because, you know, you have, I have a YouTube, I have a Deezer, let's say you have a TuneIn, then you have a freaking uh, title now, then you have Amazon Prime, and then all of a sudden you're paying fucking hundred bucks a month for, you know, the your, your entertainment utilities. Yes. But I do, I do appreciate Amazon Prime over the Netflix way more. Because it also correlates to my uh, Amazon account, so my stuff gets shipped faster, and you know it's got more and more benefits than uh, than sitting on Netflix uh, for twenty minutes, going up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, like you're trying to fucking put a cheat code in a Super Nintendo, figuring out what you're gonna that's watch. Partially a North American slash UK thing. What? Uh, that to sort of semi live. It's almost these days required to have an Amazon account because Amazon supplies so much stuff. Oh, hell yeah. Like and you, it's, I, it's I the, wouldn't have to leave this house if I didn't want to. Like, I can buy everything on Amazon delivered to my door. Yeah, but like here anyway, since it's a much smaller company, uh, country and every country or uh, company does its own shipping thing. Mm hmm. I can order a bunch of stuff right now and it'll be here tomorrow morning. Including food and God knows what else. So Amazon is much less needed here because mm -hmm. like every supermarket has its own delivery service and then uh, every electronic store has its own delivery service and most stuff is overnight. Well, yeah, but also the distances are quite smaller. Yeah, than, that's what I mean. You know. Like... Uh, the people I know here that have an Amazon account, they either want to buy stuff from the US because Amazon will deal with the import nonsense mm -hmm. or they have it for watching the, the, the streaming services, but they don't really have it to buy a lot of stuff. Yeah, I also have it because, you know, for me, like even the Tessa tape, it came because of my Prime account. It was here way faster than it normally would have if I was just, some you know, nobody off the street ordering it, first of all. So... It's uh, yeah, it's a good service. I, I I appreciate it, and that's where I'm watching the Jack Reacher thing because you can, you know, on Amazon Prime Video, right? You can, it just makes sense. You can rent stuff out instead of you know, hoping for something good to be on Netflix, mm -hmm. where you can get you know the most recent shit. You can just uh, have a good time. And yeah, the theater is the canon, bro. It's 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 the best product they had made so far. It's just uh. There's a little oversight in some details, in my opinion, uh, that uh, may bubble up for some, may never come up uh, as an issue for others. But uh, if uh, you listen to it loud and it's on its own, I think that you will come across the fact, the point that some, at, at, at some point, you will hear the rattle.
Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll keep people updated uh, as soon as I'm in the US, obviously. I'll have to re mm -hmm. redo mm -hmm. everything. Including, have to rebuild it, yeah. Uh, in including uh, all the screw holes and, and that sort of thing. And so, uh, I hope it doesn't rattle. It hasn't really rattled now other than the wall bracket, but that's fixed with like some sports tape. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, it's a thing that was really easy. It was literally you take it off tape tape it's not that two millimeter yeah. cutting nonsense you have to do well i had pre-cut everything on the board and then because the tesla tape is so forgiving so when you do make curves and such with it it, it actually conforms quite nicely so there are pigeons in my belt so mm. but uh yeah uh another thing i kind of uh i still hope but one should never buy a product on the promise of a software update. Uh, but that ha having said that, if the plan is still there to make Mozart speakers able to be rear speakers, mm -hmm. uh, and you want a very discreet look, I mean, some beer sound twos behind your theater, uh, and you have a surround sound system in in. in in a sort of triangle setup, and it it looks very sleek. Mm. I mean, or you can hang I don't know a nines on the wall bracket, and nobody will be the wiser that those a nines are speakers. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite honestly wondering if they ever uh, come up with it, or and how would it work? Because that would be surround over Wi-Fi at that point. Yeah. So. I mean, I think that they that said they're working on it. Uh, but how would you solve that uh, the problem of, let's say, inst unstable networks or the scenario where it is, uh, well, you don't know what network, because usually you don't know what network there is unless you spec it as a as a BNO dealer, right, if you're doing something from scratch. So do you ask the theater now to be the hotspot for its own speakers? You know what I'm saying? Like... Uh, Herr Vagabund, uh, I, uh, if that was your uh, question an hour ago, super chat it. <laughs> and it'll be, have a guaranteed answer to your topic and your question. That's how I start off the show. Sometimes right. you guys chat so much in chat that I can't give up and I can't, like, I'm just, otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and not say anything and read everything all the time. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I can decently multitask, but I'm not. Like, remember I can't when read we first book started driving, doing this? Right? Like that's. <laughs> remember trying. when we first started doing that, and the chat was like, and the chat started going. It was overwhelming because it's just so hard. But it's, <laughs> it's getting to the point now where I ignore the chat a little bit because if you're in a conversation, it's really hard to keep track of train of thoughts when uh, when you're reading something that is a completely different topic in a in a you know offside of the screen. My BLM Plus two doesn't switch. make a sound, but it buzzes when I turn it on. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are we <laughs> on <all> about? <laughs> but uh... <laughs> exactly, Sandy. <laughs> we need Robert Sharp back again in the chat. That's fucking priceless. <laughs> we haven't gotten trolled in so <laughs> long. <laughs> Talk about trucks. <laughs> oh god, the trucks, real men. <laughs> Remember that shit. Well, wow. at least they come with beer play now. Yeah. They sound pretty decent, actually. I've listened to it for a truck before. Or I had a chance to listen to it. It's not bad. It's uh, not bad at all. Coming back to the, the surround uh, thing over uh, Mozart or Network Link or however they figure out to do it. Mm -hmm. I think they can. They just have to put a bunch of asterisks uh, next to it uh, and, and okay okay it that way like you you have to have a, a minimum spec of network you have to like we don't guarantee this but if your network is good enough it will work that's but thing. hold on just a second though like the problem with that that i see already per se is the same problem that uh they came across trying to implement the network link where now BNO is, you know, okay, these are tested and approved routers and switches and blah, blah, blah. But then they're so market dependent and well, fuck, like we can't get this brand over here. So now what do we use in order for you guys to approve it, right? 
do you go to pack edge and pay four hundred dollars for a switch that you know you can buy for for uh you know hundred bucks if even uh from ubiquity per se yeah but now but i heard ubiquity that ubiquity has everywhere. ubiquity sold everywhere and i talked to uh, my buddy chris in uh in calgary and i was wondering what they're still using and they moved away from ubiquity because they had now come across that the quality of the product is shit that it's starting to fall apart Hmm. They don't, yeah, that it doesn't hold as long as it's supposed to hold. And maybe they're so, started resting on their laurels a bit. I think so too, right? So, I mean, you know, I, they swapped back to Pack Edge when people now pay astronomical numbers for it, but it works. Out of left field a bit, but the theater has a switch in it. What if they say wired? Get some Ethernet to your uh, theater from your router and wire in an, uh, an a9 bsn2 something like that over an ethernet wire well yeah that's, a that's an power option. link but different protocol i think the i think the best way for them to do it is to do it through the hotspot internally in the speaker itself in the theater yeah that's the best like you you bypass all the other network yes you are prone to now facing the interference but if you have a proper, you know, like if they got some beefy ass antennas in here, I don't know, I haven't seen it because I haven't taken it apart yet. Uh, but if they got some good antennae on each side, which I'm presuming they are, from what I was looking at, uh, you know, in the, the disassembly videos and service videos, you could sustain it in a room like mine. I don't think that if you start getting into, a, you know, huge spaces, you're going to start having issues and, and then you'd have to go to let's say wire network surround, which I think it would solve a lot more problems because then you have to only wire, let's say you would just run one power or a network cable into the router from your, uh, from the theater and that could run all the channels on it. Yeah. Because it just addresses it by different IP addresses for yeah, different that's, speakers. That's what I mean. Like you can, I mean, you have the, you have the switch. Uh, you have what? You have three Ethernet ports open. Yeah. Right? Uh, so you could potentially do a few, right? Like you, you could for sure do two Mozart speakers at the back. Mm -hmm. Just wire it as a power link cable, but over a different protocol. Well, but then at that point, you could probably do more than two speakers, essentially, because if you, let's say, you yeah, use sure, balance. Yeah, sure, but it's still, it's still then, over the network. Uh, yeah, but like if you use balance, it has a, it's a in and out as well. It's got two, yeah. two Ethernet ports, right? So you can just go to another one. Which is sweet, which is why I kind of never understood mm -hmm. why the balance didn't have our link. But uh, it is what it is, but that would be a way. I mean, mm -hmm. the biggest problem is really uh, is, is Wi-Fi, and I think potentially mesh. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It has extra Wi-Fi module inside, and and just extra LAN ports. So there's some potential. Sweet. I mean, yeah, it's, for it's, me, like the, the, I, I know there is potential, but for me, being a realist about it is, and 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 you know. As an installer of, uh, I've done it for a few weeks now. Uh, I do worry about the network specifications that we get into. Uh, sure, simply, but the wire fixes that. Well, the wire fixes that, but if you have a shite router or, or a shite modem, right, from a, 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 a ISP and uh, ISP provider, then. Uh, the, the, that experience is going to be as good as that, right? It's it's the same thing. If you have a shitty compressor, it's hard to pump the water to the 18th floor. Yeah, but it's just internal, right? And even the most shitty net, sh shitty routers have a decent hardware switch. I mean, they're almost I just... almost even the fifteen dollar shit boxes have uh, the one gig specified ports on them now. Mm. Like I have one of those boxes, like way over there from the ISP, and I, uh, I have my ubiquity off that because I have to because the shit box does, uh, converts uh, uh, the fiber to coaxial and does the 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 doorbell here, so I can't get rid of it. I can't put my own router in because I mm -hmm. I just can't. It's tied into the building. But 
I mean, even the, the, the physical connections are good enough on even the $15 shitbox routers now. Mm. Yeah, I just I'd have a hard time running stuff that's, you know, I mean, you're also being not great putting, per se. You're, you're not going to pull 100 megabit of sound. Oh, fuck no. There's no way. I mean, it's, so it just needs to be good enough to do, what, 20, maybe? If you're pushing full on Dolby Atmos to like 10 speakers, Mozart speakers. Pretty much. Yeah, I don't think it would be much. I mean, I'm looking now and our uh, upload speed is about 30 or so. And that's full HD, two people, audio and everything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I uh, I think that would be something something cool to do, uh, or to consider. I mean, uh, I, I just consider, hope uh, so. I mean, they said it was on the roadmap for this year, but this year is a long year. And I think I said a few months ago, uh, December thirty first, twenty twenty three, is still this year. <laughs> I just hope they come up with something bookshelfy soon. Like we need something that replaces like the seventeens, the threes. I think that that they should focus on uh, on a speaker of that of that caliber because like like the balance would be a, almost a good replacement if you had a PL port, which it doesn't. Yeah. So you know, even the the Biosound too, if it had a PL port, would be cool, but it doesn't. It for sure would look cool. Oh man, like this would look like a sconce, uh, like a wall light if you had it in a theater. Yeah. For 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 surround <clears throat> effects speakers, this would be this would be insanely good. Sorry, my especially cats with are the going theater, oh, they they got out of the box. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> well, it's Go. their environment's all out to in disarray because there's boxes <laughs> and shit everywhere. Yeah, and they love boxes. Where did you get your boxes at? Uh, local hardware store. Oh, okay. And then for the the smaller, less breakable shit, uh, a local sort of dollar store, which are actually surprisingly good boxes. They're just smaller. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, uh, I gotta buy a big roll of bubble wrap and start. Oh, uh, well, I'll actually show. There's about half of it left. Now. Yeah, I've done. I've gone through. Well, I would say it was about like yay high or so. Yeah, I've gone through three of those when I was packing, and I couldn't even count the amount of rolls and 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 loaded trunks full of bubble wrap that I had taken from Audi, because all the boxes that I got are Audi boxes, <laughs> other than the B and O boxes. So it's very constant as far as the size of it goes. So it's easy to stack and organize. But yeah, and I think I went through three and a half kilometers of uh, black saran wrap to wrap everything up. I don't know how much tape I'm at at the moment. Oh, fuck, and the tape, I can't even count the tape, man. I mean, uh, I know It got that... to the point where it was so annoying to tape shit that I bought the silent tape guns. I don't know if you've seen those. Oh, my God, it's a godsend. Actually, yeah, I think I said this on the Tuesday stream. <laughs> Uh, it, it turns out there's actually silent packing tape that yeah. doesn't go <laughs> when you get it off. The yeah, bro. <laughs> Look at this. I'll show you. Like it's uh, uh, totally yeah. sidetracked, but <laughs> well, fuck. Like if you're packing, you know. So this is the silent tape gun, and it's got this. So the tape actually comes out and over. Yeah. So. It's really quiet compared to having a, like, just, ah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, my, my tape is actually silent tape, as in... I've uh, seen those, too. Yeah, I've seen those. I mean, that's, that's your tape nerd. thing is loud compared to my tape. But, uh... I mean, I, yeah, I don't really care, tape? but uh, <laughs> the missus apparently, for her, it's like nails on the chalkboard so we had to Some go people can't buy stand silent it. tape <laughs> get her noise cancelling headphones to run around the house with uh yeah but then she but, actually has to use them 
<laughs> but yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, the taping was just like man. I remember so much. I mean uh, that stack over there. I don't know if people can see it. Uh, that's like a third. It's a uh, yeah. It's it's getting a little excessive, but it's it's getting also quite bare at the moment. Like there's no more pictures on the wall anywhere. It's like there's no more shit on the side tables other than clean. What needs stuff. to be a <laughs> and some scent yeah. candles and nonsense and. Uh... Yeah, the last thing to go into boxes is Bino. Yeah, you have the box for the TV? You kept it? Yeah. Oh, smart man. <laughs> uh, I have the boxes for everything except for one set of 17s. That's not bad. You could order the 17s box from the dealer still. No, I, I measured it out. It fits in the other boxes. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to put a, a bunch of bubble wrap and uh what you might call it uh towels and shit in there mm -hmm. and uh will be plenty yeah i might before i move to to florida i might sell the theater off just for the stefan do you need transport. another theater for in the bedroom it's rattle free it's rattle free with a set of <laughs> 18s on the side i'll do the 18s in the package deal uh, I might as well buy the 18s in the freaking Florida too. And I think I'm going to have to buy a whole bunch of stuff because uh, the way that this new lawyer thing is working. Uh, yeah. Stupid. But uh, yeah, time's passing by. Hopefully soon enough I'll be... Well, I don't have much to pack here. Just the, just the theater. You're not an idiot for putting a theater in your bedroom, Sandy. That's the, the wise decision. That's a wise decision, bro. I mean, uh, if, if I eventually, hopefully, can become pro partner or anything of the sort and I have to have a minimum display, I'll have a TV in the bedroom too. It may even be a harmony. <laughs> Some ridiculous excuses and shit that you come up with now, right? We need this here. <laughs> well, you need two of everything, right? Uh, SHQ tells me. <laughs> Two of everything. Yeah, I just I'm done with the two of everything. Which I mean, if, actually, if if that is a thing, then I'm gonna make a silly surround thing if it becomes available on Mozart. Because if you have to have two anthracite beer sound twos, two gold beer sound twos, and two silver ones, I'm gonna make a massive surround sound system with that. Hmm. The shape would be a good surround. I think. Is that a minimum display product still? The Biosound shape? Yeah. Of course. We it's have a huge that, shape in this, this in the store. It's it's just that you don't uh you don't ever see it advertised. No, unfortunately not. I don't know why they don't show it. And it's I think it's the product that 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 uh more or less scares the people that excites them because it definitely provokes the, the, the major undecisiveness in people when it comes to choosing the design, quote unquote, shape of it. And, uh, along with the fact that now, okay, so we agreed on this is what it's going to look like on the wall. What materials we're going to put on it. We're going to go with quadrat. We're going to go with the fabric. We're going to put some wood on it like this and that. And it's just, uh it's so it's scary to people but in too my opinion choices. it's too many choices but then again like that's something that i think they should concentrate more uh as far as promoting that is to the interior designers because those people love the option of having numbers of fabrics and such and they can make that work with the whatever geometric shapes that you know yeah people even the hotels and that sort of shit exactly like there's so much potential for that speaker system that uh that it's not being utilized at all oh yeah I mean, uh, good old... a beer sound 2 on a wall bracket from stb brackets uh, works amazingly well i think it works better in terms of looks than the balance on the wall does mm -hmm. and well because it's got that conical fitting yeah. shape i mean it, the the balance 
the, the uh, SDB bracket thing obviously looks okay, but it, just the shape doesn't work as nice on the wall. It sort of looks like you stuck some glue to the back of it and just pressed it into the wall. Yes. I mean, there's actually like some space. It actually is more semi-floating. This. Yeah, I do like it. I do like that bracket. Like the wall brackets like the for the 18s, pot. it also makes them floating because they're not up against the wall. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and obviously, like good people, they have it with a, a moment next to it. <laughs> <laughs> Moment oh, Owners Club Unite. <laughs> I still got mine, bro. I'm good. Uh, yeah, as do I. It's 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 over there. It needs to be packed still. Does it work with the theater? Have you tried to pair it in? Uh no, I've been so busy packing and other shit that I haven't really tried. But it's it's been working other than that fine. But I haven't I, I just a basic function check, really, and Mm -hmm. because otherwise there's no point in bringing it. <laughs> yeah, because I'm quite curious to see if I could uh, set it up as a as an audio system for the theater and then just have it wake me up uh, through the IR on the bio time. Because I'm going to use the <laughs> TV speakers, right? Yeah. Yeah, the shape, the balance looks weird on the on the wall. That it's, that thing needs to sit on the shelf, man. This period. Yeah, it's too close <clears> to <throat> the wall. It's yeah, it's too crammed. It just looks like a I don't know. Looks like something that you put a coat on. <laughs> like, not in a scale, but in a scale you see it. It looks like something that you would hang a coat on. Yeah. Or a, or a hat. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you agree with this statement. <laughs> That's right. Now we got twenty-seven likes, sixty-four watching. That's pretty good average. We could we could get a couple more people to you know navigate their joystick on the cursor and uh, put a like up. So we haven't had a giveaway for a long time. Forgot about it. We should have done something for the two fifty. We'll do a giveaway, well, and once I'm in the U.S. again. But obviously, somebody in Europe will win it then, and it's like, oh, of course, <laughs> I have to send it to the other guy. So of know. course, that's just the it way it seems. Like a lot of people uh, that wanted while well, I was here wanted for far away, and it'll probably stay like that, and the winners will be far away again, but the opposite way. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Doesn't that it always works like that too? God damn it! Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I have some stuff to potentially give away, but again, it's in bloody boxes now, and I'm not going to reopen everything that's taped. No, no. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I cannot give away an essence remote because I only have one. Unless I magically come into like two more, then I got three. Ah, oh, so you <laughs> don't need the other one. But I only got two here. I don't know where the third one went. I think it's in the box. It might be in the box. I got five remotes in this studio apartment. It's Hi. a little ridiculous. Well, because I got one here, right? That's the beater that goes around yeah. everywhere. That's the kitchen remote. <clears throat> and then I have one at the bed. And then I have one on the side, which is the essence. So I have a beer remote one on the right side of the bed and the essence remote on the left side of the bed. And then I have the essence remote in the bathroom, and then I have another bio remote one on the wall bracket at the door at the main entrance. That one is just like a standby button and my button feature function. That's it. So I'm still like as crazy as Eric when it comes to remotes. Uh, here I I found uh well not me really Billy found this for you. What's that? It'd be a remote one. Holy fuck, that is dented. Holy bro. <laughs> wow, there's no way you can take the chassis out. <laughs> wow, holy fuck, look at the list button is out. Oh, that's major damage, bro. 80 bucks, what the fuck for? Like... <laughs> yeah, I'm still <laughs> asking for 80 bucks for this. <laughs> 
Wow, that's like real dented. Tabernacle. <laughs> I mean, even the info button is just, like squished in. Oh yeah, dude, this that that thing took some serious corner, whatever the fuck it hit. Yeah, that that dented a forehead somewhere, somebody. That's yeah, sure. B- Beotil on the Discord said uh, it's handy actually that the arrow points to where the dent is. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> <laughs> the back button. <laughs> oh god, the irony of it. <laughs> Oh my lord! I don't know what the fuck would you smack in order for that to be that hard hit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that must have been over. It must have been something like a watching a game. God, like that, bro! Like it's all fucked up. <laughs> wow! Wow! Like the only thing that's good in this thing is the batteries. If you can get him out. If that, yeah. Wow, like that is fucked up. <laughs> I am like speechless for how screwed that is. There's no way you could even fix that. There's like, that is garbage. I mean, your remote from your accident was less dented than this thing is. I couldn't say because I've never seen it since, but no way that this, like, wow. I would love to know how that happened. That must have been an argument of some sort, bro. Well, this is one of the fun perks of being on our Discord. You you get to see this sort of nonsense because everybody runs into stupid things and apparently this is on eBay and you can buy it for 80 bucks. I don't know what this bounced off of, but that must have been hard. I mean, I'm equally thing... amazed at the, at the sheer... Oh, it's 80 quid, actually. I'm at the sheer balls yeah. of asking 80 pounds for this still. It still works. You may have limited functionality on the back button. Uh, he, he also says, Bang & Olufsen remote, be your remote one natural, might be good for parts, not working. <laughs> That's the description. What parts? The the freaking <laughs> the batteries probably. <laughs> the chassis is a unibody. The only thing is good in that thing, if if even is the battery holder. Because I, I mean, try to take this apart, like I try to take apart the actual, because uh, you know, like there's so many little torque force screws and stuff. Mm-hmm. I unscrewed all of them and it is glued together. This is ultrasonically welded. If I'm gauging right, or glued to the point where it's unserviceable. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, maybe supply chain issues in those Duracells that are in there, like 40, 40 quid a battery. Wow. Like that's, I've never seen a remote that messed up, bro. I've seen a few BO4s, but that was more or less, uh, you know, like a big dog try to bring the remote to the owner and put a molar through or the, the put one yeah. of their teeth through the, yeah, put the canine through the freaking display. But that's only like I've seen this once. I had a lady drop a Biocom 2 in a chicken soup. <laughs> Oops. Smelled good. And she brought it in. Yeah, my remote once smelled good too. Uh, it, it was the other way around. I actually spilled barbecue sauce all over the <laughs> Oh, fuck. And it was obviously you- all the uh, volume up and... It was oh, just yeah. on the table, and it's like, yeah, and it's like, ah, fuck, and it's like, oh, <laughs> oh nice, <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. I try to keep them away from food, but every now and then they make if they they find themselves in shits. But I still gotta give them. It's a it's a very solid remote control. I've had mine for a long time now. I think that that's the one that I've retired to the door because the buttons are a little more mushy and it doesn't respond as well. And I think that the Bluetooth antenna is kind of at its... Have you factory reset it? Yes. Yeah, 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 I've done that one. Because for people that don't know, if your BO Remote 1 gets a bit sluggish, it may be because you've done several product cycles with it. And if you factory reset it, most of them will fully go back to normal startup speed. 
it's just like cash is full or something. I think so too. Uh, another thing that I wonder if anybody in the chat that owns a theater and uh, at least has to be a remote once has that problem or had come across this problem where in one of my remotes, uh, I don't have the speaker. This one has the speaker, so I can select uh, the speaker groups yeah. or li- quote unquote listening positions. But if I take one from my uh, from my bedroom thing, so I have a uh, tabernacle. Let's go here. So I have stand. Yeah, sound control, light, light settings. The, where is the speaker? But are you in living room? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, what happens if you select the theater as a as Nothing. a product? So, shower, living room, right? Yeah. Go back to list. Yeah, but what happens if you turn the theater on? No, but it doesn't make any difference. This one. Weird. Has the speaker in it. Yeah. And so is the one at the door. This is the only one that doesn't. And they're the same software version as well. Hmm. So. But I if you know. go to the list and select product and you select uh, uh, the theater, well, it, doesn't it probably refresh. has to uplo- upload that thing. And it doesn't always do it. It doesn't refresh. I went back and forth, back and forth. I even pulled the remote out, rebooted it, put it back in go back to the living room, it doesn't give me the speaker. Hmm. I might have to just delete all the B remote ones because I don't know which one the fuck it is now. <laughs> and uh, just delete them all and repair them all and see what happens. Yeah. Because I also have a, I have a service remote now that I, I, I carry in my my toolbox, which is the, 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 the most hated one, the Netflix, Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. But then again, like, you know, I I dislike that remote with passion, but in the same time, it's a necessary remote to have because on the other one, yes, you can put Netflix and Amazon as a my button, but if you want to test that functionality, let's say on the net on an Eclipse TV that you know people have that button, right? Then yeah. uh, you kind of need that, and you have only one my button, but at least you have one my button to check that you know okay this works or this doesn't work. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, a quick <clears throat> uh, point of contention, B and O. Uh, I really like the idea of stereo pair your beer sound A9 together now on the Mozart thing. But why the hell is the price just 2x? Like, what's in it for me to make the jump to the second one if you're not even going to give me anything off? Yeah, they always do that for some reason. Like, they, the, 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 the promo includes no deal. Yeah, but how is, how is uh, that a promo? Well, in their eyes, it is, I guess. Yeah, but you're saving them two. the you're doing and them a favor because you're buying a second one, and you're saving them on extra shipping mm-hmm. because it's not like they send out two separate packages. So it's a good deal for them. Yeah, so like, why not? I don't know. I'm not saying give fifty percent off. I'm saying uh, make it a deal of some kind. In my opinion, it should be twenty percent off the second one. Yeah, you think so, or at, at least ten or five, something, anything, anything is better than just say, "Well, our deal is you pay full price twice." It's like, mm-hmm. wh- why? I mean, if you go to a dealer, you d- you're not paying full price if you buy two. You don't pay like, but that's I guess the thing that you know if you're dumb and lazy enough to do it online, then you pay the full price. If you go to the dealer, you can just do it. Uh, you can just do it with. Uh, uh, what Sunday? I just paired bedroom. I other theater and it shows the speaker. So both remotes show the speaker both in the same living room theater. I don't understand why mine doesn't do that, man. Like I said, I've reset it. I'm going to reset them off the bloody, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, I'm going to just delete all the remotes from the from the theater and repair them and see if it redownloads. Because I think, no, this one is fine. I put that one away. Fuck. <laughs> Only thing I don't like, it doesn't show which ones are active. 
Here, let's do that. Let's try this again. Uh, Herr Vagabund, you're saying in Germany one is uh, 3,600 and a pair is 6,600. Uh, maybe B&O is pulling a sneaky one on you because there's a difference in price between the gold tone, which is 3,600, then the black anthracite is 3,300, and then the natural aluminium is 3,600. And uh, if you go to the uh, pair price, it's for the uh, black anthracite one. <coughs> hmm. So it, it's it's literally exactly 2x. <laughs> Our deal to you, if you buy two, is you pay double. <laughs> like, how is that a deal? Come on. Fuck. Okay, so now it's restarted. Let's go back to the room. There used to be for a while uh, that it, buy a second one, get 10% off. Buy a third one and you get 20% off. That came, that, that went, then it came back again, and now it's gone again. But why is that not a permanent thing if you want to sell more online? I, right. I, 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 don't, I don't understand. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I'm much happier to go to a dealer and help a dealer out. I mean, there's a, a reason uh, I try and help my dealer out and why you can always find his uh, description and uh, contact info down uh, below. Because I think mm -hmm. you should help dealers because let's say one of these is faulty, you're going to have to send it back and you're not going to... It's different in Europe than it is in the US. I fully understand the, the internet sale if you're, I don't know, in Texas or something. Because there's just nobody around. But in Europe, like, are you going to go to a dealer that's not yours just because you then say, you sold this to me, which he didn't? Mm. So you're going to have to send it back, which is annoying, because then you're going to have to go to the post office with a big-ass box. Yeah. See, that's what I don't like. Which remote is the freaking remote now? doesn't show the serial numbers on the back of them. It used Not to, right? Back. It used to with the I army think so. anyway. Mm -hmm. It used to yeah, have this the, the, is the six digit code or something behind it. Well, it's eight digit serial num number on this, and it doesn't have anything here. It doesn't show in an about also like pair devices. No. Harsh, harsh times. But uh, yeah, support your dealer. If you, if you, if you're interested in now that there's a, a Mark V A9 and then want to stereo pair them, buy them at the dealer. 100%. Clearly buying them online is useless. There's no deal. Sir so says warranty uh, can be claimed by any dealer. I understand. But if you bought it at your dealer, he's going to be much more enthusiastic to help you than if it's something he can at best bill help hours to be an o over mm -hmm. because it's like you're not my customer my customer you actually went around and avoided me <laughs> yeah and usually you know what the sad part is that those people expect the best service and they don't even you know they don't do shit i mean they just uh, uh... It, it put it a different way imagine you're a Ferrari dealer and a guy comes in with a Ferrari and you've never seen him or the car and he just goes, this is your problem now. My alternator's gone. You're going to be like, I, I guess, and we'll I'll figure it out, but you're not my priority, not compared to other customers that actually come here and shop here. Mm -hmm. Like they'll be professional about it, but it's not like they'll go above and beyond for you because there's nothing in it for them. Exactly. I mean, at least they have some margin. Uh, and you'll get the same price, if not better, and he'll be happier. And he'll be also happier to help you. Yeah, but some people just don't see the value in that, I think. Yeah, I mean... The so sound is not interesting. Yeah, I, I understand this, this, this online selling <laughs> to a certain extent and certain parts of the world, right? Because there's just... It, it, for us, uh, America and Canada, there's whole swaths of country where there's literally nothing. Like it's it's twelve hours either way to the nearest shop. 
people. So yeah, I, I understand on selling online there, but in countries in Europe where there's a dealer with But why not give that to the dealer still? Why not give it to the dealer even if you're if we're twelve hours drive away? If somebody buys it, have the dealer ship it out. Have them have that profit. No, but that's you know how what it I mean? works X the profit. So usually as i understand it how it goes if like i don't know let's say you live in uh, in the middle of canada and you order something online b and o will tell a dealer either side send this there and we'll give you a fee for doing that but you don't get don't the full margin i don't know if that works like that with us i don't remember i don't i don't think so i think this should be directly from b and o well i i mean i was told by several dealers on the European side anyway, that if you, because for a long time you could buy like an Eclipse or a Harmony online, right? That's crazy. Yeah. So for, I think that happened like maybe twice, but then a dealer would be contacted. They would get a service fee and they could get the delivery. So they would make some on it, but it would no, be nowhere near what it would be if they sold it themselves. Of course. Which is like, what's the point? Fuck it. You're What's mandating somebody basically work for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit unfair, in my opinion. Yeah, this is why I don't particularly like the online. I, I get it for the smaller items like headphones and that sort of shit, because most dealers don't really want that headache. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun as an add-on, like, oh, you buy some 28s, you're a 10-year customer. Is your son interested in some portals? I'll, I'll toss them in. Thanks, yeah. Hank, John, whoever, for being mm -hmm. a good customer. I mean, yeah, I think it's better doing that way, in my opinion. Give them more gear mm -hmm. than doing discounts. I used to do that, too. Like My first system people bought uh, was a Buvision 7 with a set of Lab 3s, Lab 11, and uh, and uh, Lab 4s in the rears on, on those STB bracket stands from Lab 3s and a BioCenter 2. So it was like a $35,000 sale. So I gave him a BioSound 3, the little radio, mm. like for barbecues. And he fucking is like, he is in love with that thing. To this day, they love that little radio. And then they bought the level next uh, next time they moved to another house. They've installed the TV downstairs and it's kind of, it's not a focal point anymore because it's a basement TV, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> but it all still works I kind of want one of those BSN 3s eventually just for a collection purpose because they are kind of cool <laughs> I love mine man I have it packed up and it's the only thing that, that serves the purpose for now it's to show to tell time the only thing that it does is to tell time I don't use does it for alarm does your antenna still work? of course everything works the touch panel works everything works because I never use it. It's just plugged into the wall and just shows time. I mean, uh, <laughs> the antenna, uh, the automation of it reminds me of a kid's show here. Because uh, any Dutch people in chat will know Bossy and Adrian, which is an acrobat and a clown. And they go crime fighting. <laughs> and uh, there's one of the bad guys. And whenever he has to call the boss, there is like an automated antenna coming out of his shoulder because he has like a, a full on phone in this inside of his jacket. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> As in yeah, like a mobile phone from the true. 80s, right? Like it's a whole oh, thing fuck. with a cord. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> But yeah, it, it did have a nickname of a cheese grater. To me, it more or less looks like a World Trade Center. Yeah, it does. Very much so. That's what it looks to me like. It looks like one of the towers. I'm not sure that's but, a good uh, or a bad omen. but I think it's a good omen. It's still a great product for how little it was, man. And I remember, yeah, taking it camping, which kind of like people are fucking are you insane, taking a $1,200 aluminum slab to go camping i'm like well i'm not gonna roll it in the freaking river creek and uh, yeah it's just it, you take this glamping or unless you take this camping and uh yeah it, its performance was always good 
Well, you have camping and then you have camping, right? Like you mm -hmm. can go camping and have an air mattress, or you can go camping and you have an air mattress that auto inflates. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, when we go out camping, usually, you know, like you bring the stove, you bring the whole thing and, you know, like this sits on the picnic table or whatever, you know, you got the SD card slot, you can put two gigs of music in it. It's plenty. It's more than plenty for a little campfire, you know, being around the deal. So, no, I, yeah, it's a. How long does the battery last on that? I think like eight hours. Hmm. That's okay. I remember, like, on a, on a low volume, but I remember when, like, before the A1 came out, I would listen, I would take this outside and to wash my car, uh, and it would be playing at, like, you know, I think this goes to 72 or, or, no, 60 or some shit, but it would play at, like, three-quarter volume up, like, high, high volume, and it would last the entire two, three hours, like, when I would clean the car, wax it, and blah, 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 all this shit, so, like, more or less the entire saturday morning i would spend around it and it just played without any without any issues i have a few of those ball brackets actually mounted one on the outside Rex says the, the original explorer <laughs> pretty much this was the first portable battery powered uh, product that bno had made really uh there was nothing before that that was battery powered like a little alarm clock type of thing at least that i can think of no it's so B and O though with the, the the go button and oh yeah, it's funny that you know coincidentally speaking about it, I have uh, you know the dynamic wallpapers that change in my background yeah, and it's been a Bio Sound three the entire time we were talking about it for some reason it just came up <laughs> so no I, I kind really of like this product. layout and this font and everything mm -hmm. I mean well the, it's still the, the same font because it's a Bio font so it's the same font on this. <clears throat> but uh i mean it's it's not bad but it's it's sort of like i don't know it it's, it's almost small. yeah i don't know it's that font small. and the, that layout is nostalgic to me in many ways and and it's so ingrained where this is is getting there but it still isn't even after like five years of use now like I haven't well, touched a Bio Four in maybe two years, and I, I still can control that thing blind. And this is still yes. like, like we're still gonna look dark. <laughs> yeah, I hope that they come up with the Mark II remote that actually has backlighting, because quite honestly, none of us mind charging the remote. If you can come up with something like a Pogo charger or, or Pogo connections uh, to the, you know. Or chi charging it, or something even if it was just the pogos would be the best because it's just your magnet and, and just click it like on a biocom 2 charger type of thing uh that you know if or make it nice out of aluminium charge another 500 fucking dollars for it who cares but you know make something sexy that you could actually charge the remote and have this thing afford to have a backlit screen uh well screen is already backlit anyways but uh, the buttons yeah the freaking buttons need to be backlit for how small they are because there is just it's really tough to operate this thing especially like I mean, BO6 especially and BO5 with the new were displays. like five six hundred at least weren't they if not more bo6 was thousand dollars yeah and those sold seemingly plenty because i see them on the second hand market all the time here yeah yeah I mean, I'm not saying oh, go do. for a thousand dollars just because you can, but like, if if you have something where you can click it like that at night and, like, like the Biocom mm -hmm. two charge, it would be fantastic. I mean, yeah, um, let's uh, guy court says let's get to Halo do something else in the volume. Well, it does a lot more than the volume. If you do have a let's say a Bio Living Intelligence, you can use it for controlling your lighting system and temperatures and so on and so forth. Did with uh, SIO too. Yeah, you can tell time, uh, or it can tell time, which is a cool feature, in my opinion, to have. And uh, that's about it. I think that they are missing, as far as anything is being missing right now, is the remote control support for the Biosound Theater. Because I cannot fathom why does the Biosound stage have it, which is uh, a fraction cost product towards the theater, and the theater does not. It does. So... What it, it it has some remote control. The theater? Yeah. How? 
No, I'm talking on the app. It does have it. Oh, on the, on the app. Yeah. yeah on but the app, e- it doesn't. E- even on here, it's less uh, mm-hmm. functional than it was for a Harmony. And I yes. think because it's less integrated. Because, I mean, if you pause it, it just pauses sound. It's like, mm-hmm. but it doesn't Mute. pause the TV. Yeah. It's like, okay, how am I help with that? <laughs> so yeah that's uh yeah then hopefully they'll do something with the new software for it i mean uh i'm sure i'm sure might be updated this week again uh i think it may be to fix the last fix uh also suppose- i think they issued out a wrong software i think that they just they somebody fucked up and put the wrong software fold uh in a in an update folder and it went to everybody yeah, because there was supposedly also a fix for high battery use for Be Remote One and theater owners. Mm. Because uh, I don't know about you, but since having a theater, I'm on my third set of batteries now in six months. So they last about two months or something for. Yeah, yeah, I've lasted about six weeks on one. On this remote that I use a lot, it definitely, the battery shows almost right away. But apparently it's because it's like constantly phoning home or something like that. Mm hmm. So the your remote is like off, but still on doing shit in the background. Whereas with the Harmony, you could go, I don't know, I went a year and a half between batteries replacing. So see already, like if it's two months, then freaking back like the bloody thing and I'll just keep buying batteries anyways. I'd rather have rechargeable batteries, like like the, the old fashioned packs and it just charges. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't have to do it every day. Like, that gets a bit much. But if it can last, I don't know, two weeks. A week. Even a week is more than enough. Depends on how much you use the TV. And if the charging time is, I don't know, an hour or so, who cares? Like, you put it on the charger when you go to bed at night, and it's fine for another week. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know, BNO, do something, bro. Honestly, man, this fucking remote. I've been bitching about it for so long. You guys need to back like this, or or at least whoever says that no, then they should have a BNO TV in their house with this remote and control it day to day, and even worse, have their wife fucking live with it, and then we can talk because I don't think that the people live with this enough in where they design this. No, and if you don't live with it, uh, attach it to an A9 or BSN2 or all the things. And try and like work the it problem out. now with the with the new TVs, especially the OLEDs, right? Like if it goes to blank screen, it's fucking dark, bro. It's not like on the Avant where you still have that light seepage from the LCD backlighting, right? Like you can still tell, and you know. But this is just off. It's off just like it is off right now. You can't tell that it's on. Mm-hmm. And 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 you know, in in the old Avant times, you could still kind of lean it and get the shimmer from the TV, so you can kind of <laughs> see the fucking buttons. But with this, you can't. You know what I mean? God, Wait I'm gonna have to such explode. a hard time in the US because here at night, in the middle of the city, there's so much light bleed. It's never really dark. But then, no, in you're the gonna US, have a problem. Like if yeah. my neighbors don't have any out exterior lights, I'm just like, I can't, I can't see where is everything. <laughs> Yeah, you'll have ambient lighting in the house. Yeah, you're gonna as end a up must. doing lighting control. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna do. You're gonna end up doing lighting control for sure. I can't do that. Maybe I'm just gonna have uh, evening lamps in the in the pool or something that are permanently on. Yeah, just don't put them in the pool. <laughs> no, no, in the side, in the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you can get. Uh, I've looked it up. You can even get disco lights in the pool. So they go RGB spectrum in your pool in your watercolors. <laughs> RGB everything. <laughs> oh, God. It's just pop, man. <laughs> yeah, eat some magic mushrooms and walk around your house as all the colors change on it. Yeah. Have a good day. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it for today. Uh Good people, uh, check out Skinny Play, but also check out Prestige Creators. Their uh, promo code uh, ends at the uh, 31st of the month. And, uh, Before we go, uh, when do you guys change the time again? Because now, obviously, for North American side, we've been an hour late. So In two weeks. So in two weeks. Uh, so, so I think next week is still... Three o'clock. Yeah. 
and then week after next is another three o'clock and then you're fucking gone <laughs> Basically. So, it <laughs> yeah. so it doesn't matter <laughs> but uh yeah we got not too many left now i guess in uh in a in a in a, in a pipe yeah and from there on in uh we'll figure out what we do because it's gonna be weird having a sa- sunday off for a few weeks or a few months I mean, to actually have life yeah, that too but uh I mean, uh, I'll be basically mobile phoneless for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, which is also going to be strange because, like, you're back to the era where you can only message people when you're on the local Wi-Fi network. <laughs> well, once you get to states, you can just buy a phone. It's no problem. Just get yeah, I understand, phone, but I don't want to buy a, a pay-as-you-go thing because there's mm. really no need to. Because uh, within a month, we hopefully have a place where you can get a, a plan, right? <laughs> well, but you can change that plan from pay as you go to a, to a regular plan. Yeah. Well, you don't have to change the, you, I don't think you have to change your, uh, 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 what's it called? Your phone number. I don't believe so. Uh, Herr Fagerman, will your YouTube channel stay when you are moved? Yes, absolutely. We're not stopping. It's just a hiatus. And, uh, I, I don't know how long the hiatus will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, I don't know how long it will take from ordering internet at a place if you have a place rental or otherwise until it's delivered, right? It's about a few days. It's not long. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe there's a store. Maybe there's a supply shortage. Maybe they fuck something up. I don't know. Like, this is not something I can commit to. (laughs) So uh, the the hiatus is sort of like... We'll We'll be back when we get there, bro. Uh, Yeah, in the meantime... uh, look on the discord and that sort of thing uh i will have an uh, ipad with me uh i think i will take my computer with me as carry on on the second leg back uh but then i have to figure out what to do with screens and that sort of things and if the internet where i am is stable enough for all this mm-hmm. because uh america isn't exactly known for the most stable internet still no, pretty good internet, man. If I can remember the stream when I was driving through Montana, which was like the most uh, or least populated place, basically. And yeah, but you haven't dealt with Verizon and that sort of stuff yet, right? Because uh, they, they t- like to throttle you when everybody uses internet and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, no, I haven't. But I, at the end of the day, like it's, I guess, yeah, it would be a prime time Saturday fucking between two and four. Yeah, it's... I mean, uh, Verizon is like, oh, you're uploading something. That must mean you're a business account and you're using a residential, so we'll throttle you. Thank you. Bye. Then you probably have to open a business account and that's it. You get a better service immediately. Yeah. And better customer service as well because it's a business account. And, so, uh, I mean, i am come from a place where there's no data caps on anything. <laughs> so, and, and, so, and that's still a thing in a lot of parts of the US, which is weird. Yeah. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, uh, go to Prestige, buy some uh, covers for your BLAP ones, eight, eight thousands, and etc. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, have a good one. I'll watching. see you all Tuesday probably, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye. Strange as it